so here's what you can expect for this webinar. We're going to break it up into a few components just to kind of give you an idea of, you know, what our pacing is going to be like. And so, first of all, we're going to kick off the webinar with an example of how the customer, how does a customer use the customer portal? You know, we want to give you context into, you know, the basics of how you can get the portal to work for any customer. Now, each of you represents a different organization that is going to do things differently. It's going to have different requirements. You're going to have different ways of, you know, doing development. Or if you're not a development house, you're going to have different ways of just approaching how you use Axosoft. And that's that's well and good. That's we want a diverse customer set. Um, but I want to at least give you the foundation to how how you would use our ticketing system. So following that, I'm going to show you how we, I configured the example that I'll show you, and I'll also go through. And in this configuration part, I'm going to go through three components. So, so you know that where I where I am when I'm going through this in the webinar. So, I'm going to talk about portal security roles. I'm going to talk about the general customer portal settings, and then I'm also going to touch on portal field templates. So these are templates that customers use to fill out the tickets that you give them permission to access. And so, following those configuration pieces, I'm going to then pass it over to James. And so James is going to have a preview of a few changes that we plan to make to the portal security roles in particular. So this is something that's coming up in a release. It's not finalized. So what you see may not be what is ultimately released because we're we're already making changes you know, as we speak. But it should give you a flavor for what we intend to do with the portal for, the next, for an upcoming release. And of course, as I mentioned, we will be doing Q&A towards the end of the session, so I'm going to reserve at least the last 10 or 15 minutes for Q&A. And so if you have any questions right now or if you can't hear me, please post those questions and James will take care of it. At the moment, I'm going to switch over to the Axosoft application. So please bear with me. I should be able to switch my screen here. You might not see this, but don't worry about it. Okay, so what you should be seeing right now is Axosoft. If you are not seeing Axosoft, please let us know. But I want to kick off the webinar with an example of how a customer would use a customer portal. And so I wanted to start off here in Axosoft just because I want to touch, I want to answer a few basic questions first. So do you, you probably have the customer portal. If you're attending this webinar, you're either interested in learning more about the portal or you yourself have the portal and you know exactly how to get it. But for those of you who don't and are interested in getting the portal, Axo, the portal is available through the module Axosoft Help Desk, which is already included if you have Axosoft Complete, which contains our entire product. Um, but if you are, you know, only have Axosoft Scrum, or if you are just a starter, um, you are welcome to add the Axosoft Help Desk module, which will introduce all the functionality that I will be going over in this webinar. So th just I just want to answer that question first. And so let me just dive in to the example that I have. So before I get going, I will be sprinkling some best practices throughout the webinar as well, just some things that I recommend. The first best practice that, that I recommend doing is exactly what I'll be doing throughout this entire webinar. I have set up a dummy account for the sake of testing what my portal will look like for my customers. And so in my case, since I'm using sample data, and if you've used our sample data, then you're probably familiar with what you see in front of you. But the test customer that I have, his name is Bob Sanders. And so he's down here. There's currently no items associated with Bob Sanders, so that's why my workspace is clear and empty. Um, but I'm going to log in as Bob because, you know, Bob has a question and Bob can't log in to his actual Axosoft account. Or if if you guys are using a different product, then perhaps they can't access that product. And so this is their way of trying to communicate with you to help them out. And so Bob is already a registered customer contact in my Axosoft account. So you saw I already entered Bob's company name and I've already added him and a couple other contacts underneath his company. So you can do this for other organizations as well and other customer contacts. The advantage of doing this ahead of time is that Bob already has his username and login. You'll notice, however, that you have the option to allow customers to self-register. And if they do self-register, you also have the option of whether or not to approve them. So that's something that I'll get into when I go over the customer portal settings. But that's just something to be aware of. And there's also a third setting as well, which is the anonymous access, so what people see 
without even needing to log in. So that's something that's typically reserved for special types of teams, teams that don't really worry about who can see what. Again, I'll get to that when I get to the portal security roles. But for now, I'm going to log in as Bob. Bob is a user that I already have registered in Axosoft. And this is what Bob sees. So I'm so in this case, the company example that we're using today is PureChat. This is PureChat's customer portal, and Bob can't log into PureChat. And so he wants to submit a support ticket um, explaining his situation. And so I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to pull up my scratch pad. I already have basically one I want to have listed here. And I'm going to go back. And so Bob has access to two tabs. He has access to the defects tab, which I have labeled bugs. And then he has access to the incidents tab which he will understand as a support ticket. You may have these tabs named differently because Axelsoft allows you to rename your tabs to rename your item types. And so what you see in front of you may not be what you see just because you've already customized your things to match what you want. So Bob is gonna add a support ticket. Um, I'm going to say, cannot log in. I'm gonna paste in that description I was copying earlier from my scratch pad. And then I, I have the option to specify whether this is for pure chat or subcomponents of pure chat. And this is modeled off of my project tree structure. So um, I'll go over this in a moment, but the portal security role only allows him to access this particular project. And I'll show you where you did that. But just to show you what I mean, this matches exactly the project tree structure that I have in Axosoft. So I'm going to switch back over. Now, something that I've done here that is another best practice that at least we do here internally is I give the customer the option to submit an emotional state. And so the reason we do this is, at least this is our hypothesis, that when you submit an emotional state, say that Bob is very angry. He can tell me that he's angry without maybe necessarily putting everything in all caps. It just makes it more legible, makes it much less stressful to actually troubleshoot the issue. And so that's something you can consider doing in case you want to just get a feel for how your customer is feeling when they're submitting their support ticket. And then, of course, I can, you know, using Chrome, get blank, something, something, you know. And if he wants, he can add a screenshot. We give him the ability to add an attachment. So I save and close the ticket. And here's the... Here's the key thing. So he sees his own tickets that he submits. Um, he's able to see the status and the title. I'll talk about how you can change this view as well. Um, and as the Axosoft user, if I were to refresh my page, I see that a new ticket has come in, and it is from Bob Sanders. So I can see that every, try, I, every time I try to log in, it says invalid username and password. Please help. And so the advantage of Bob already being of registered users, I can go to my emails tab and I can hit new and his email address is already set to be the recipient. Um, if you have a default from address and you can put it, in my case, I might do support at curechat.com and I can start typing, hello, hello, Bob, here's how we can help you out. And so that essentially represents all the, what the customer needs to do. The customer just needs to submit their ticket. They're able to see the ticket, their, their progress, and that you can begin an email conversation between the two. And then your support reps or you know, whoever is receiving these incidents, they might not be support reps, they might be to, you know, your testers or just other members of your team, can move the item through the workflow. And so just like any other item, item from here, you, know, you take over, you do what you want in Axosoft. Okay, so that's essentially a really basic example of how a customer can submit a ticket. Is it limited to just this? No. I mean, the customer portal is is as flexible as what you've configured in Axosoft. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you don't have support tickets, if you use something else, you know, I've had customers who, you know, have change order requests, and it's very particular to how they do something in their organization. It's how, or people requesting, they make some sort of request and they want to do that via the portal. And so it's not limited to that, but the functionality is here. You can have the customer log in request or input whatever type of information you need. And then that information is then here inside of your workspace when you log in as an Axosoft user and you're able to move it through your own workflow. Okay, 
So I'm going to move on now to how I configure this, answering that question of like, well, that's great, but how can I configure it? And then from here, I'll also touch on extra things you can do with the portal as well. So everything that you saw is a result of a portal security role that is associated to Bob Sanders. So if I drill into Bob Sanders, so I'm clicking on his customer contact here. I'm going to click edit under customers and, you know, I can edit his contact information, maybe associate him to a different company. In this case, I've associated to him to the example company. And the portal security role that he is using is the default, it's just the default that I have in the system. I only have two at the moment. I have the anonymous security role, which I'll get to in a moment, and the default security role that he is using. So let's take a look at this default security role. What are we actually giving him the ability to do? So if you go to tools, customer portal, portal security roles, you'll be taken to all the portal security roles that you have access to. So here it is, the default security role that Bob is associated to. And these are all the permissions that he has access to. So basically, everything that you check here, every box that you check, is essentially what you give the customer the ability to see. This is what they can do. This is the information that they have access to. So let me explain what is already configured. So Bob has access to only the pure chat project. But if I wanted to, I can give him access to all projects, or I can give him access to a different project folder, so dash Zen, or transfer big files. Um, he has no access whatsoever. There's no box checked for features. So that, that means he does, that is why you didn't see a features tab in the customer portal. When I go on the other side here, um, that's why you only see bugs and incidents because that matches up very well with the permissions I give for bugs and the permissions I give for incidents. If I wanted to completely remove his ability to view and add defects, all I would need to do is uncheck all of these permissions. I would need to save. I will need, and I'll switch back here. I'm going to refresh my page. And you'll see that the portal will update so that he only has access to add support tickets. And so this is, you can start, you start to see how essentially what permissions you give are what the, you're designing their experience. Okay, so let me drill in further into a few other, like each, each component of the portal security role. And so one question that we often get is, I think, so Jonathan, I think it's really cool that you can create as many portal security roles as you'd like. Um, but do I really have to create a portal security role for each customer, like, you know, each company that I have? Or is there a way I can maybe streamline that? And the question, and the answer to that is it depends. If you have some flexibility, then you might be able to, you know, generalize a portal security role over several different co companies and customer contacts. And the way you would do that is you would take advantage of the filtering that we give you. And so for example, you might want to be able to, you might want to create a, uh, a filter that only shows items that are associated to the customer contact. And so that would just be a filter condition that you can include that only show, you know, basically it's the version of assigned to me. So it is assigned to me, the customer contact, therefore I only see my stuff. I mean, that's, and that's also, already a permission under here, but you can, you know, take it further by applying it, you know, maybe applying a certain time frame, maybe applying certain, you don't want to see, let them see statuses, uh, certain items that are in particular statuses. And so what I recommend doing is explore filters and see if you can apply a filter that might allow you to spread a portal security role over not just one organization, but several organizations amid several different contexts. Okay. And then, so you can restrict the view to a particular project folder. You can allow adding and editing within maybe a subfolder or the same project folder. It's up to you. And then we break, then we come into the general permissions. And so all of this is what James will talk about later. Um, so this might be changing, just a heads up, but let me at least tell you what you can do right now. So after this webinar, this is what you can do right now. Or if you have a, another screen, maybe you can follow along. And so view public is probably the most common question that we get. What does this mean for an item to be publicly viewable? And so publicly viewable, that permission is really two sets of permissions. So in order for a customer to view a publicly viewable item on the customer portal, two things have to happen. The first thing is that this box has to be checked. 
this customer who has the default security role, portal security role associated to them, has permission to view items that are marked publicly viewable. So that's the first condition. The second condition is that the item itself, so when I go and edit you know, a ticket or a feature, a feature or a defect, there is a field that you can include in the, in the field template that is just a checkbox that says publicly viewable, yes or no. And so if you check that box, that is the second condition. So two things have to happen whenever any item can be made publicly viewable. So you have to have permission to view publicly viewable items, which is what you see right here. And the item itself has to be flagged as publicly viewable. So if both those things happen, then that's who can see a publicly viewable item. And so in this case, this customer has permission to view items that are marked publicly viewable. They can add incidents. I don't give them the ability to, or I do give them the ability to edit their own incidents, but this is something you might want to consider removing. Do you want them to, once they give you information, do you want them to change it? And again, that might be, that might not be such a big deal depending on how you use your portal field templates, which is something I'll get into soon. Um, and then just basically rinse and repeat, but for attachments or whether or not they can edit publicly viewable items, um, whether they can add their own attachments, whether they can see their own attachments. So when you see add my, view my, I the customer can view my own attachments. I the customer can add my own attachments. Um, and I also want to see items that are associated to, so Bob is associated to example, doc, example company. And so if you also want to see Bill Thomas, it's kind of faded here, but Bill Thomas is another contact in the example company. So he can also see his items if this permission is checked. So that gives you just a quick breakdown on what the portal security roles can do. You saw how, let me just add the ability to add features and then let me save. And then I'll just demo once more that this is how you can, again, change what they can do in each tab. So in this case, I have given this person the ability to add a feature request if they wanted to. Now, you may decide you don't want to be flooded with feature requests. That's up to you. But the portal, the way they submit a feature request is very simple. They just title, project, description. So you saw how it's different for, I'll show you how why it's different, but adding a feature is different than adding an incident because I'm asking for different pieces of information. And so I'll show you how you can do that with portal field templates. Okay, so I've talked about that component of configuration, so the portal, field, the portal security roles. Now let's touch in on the actual general settings. So customer portal, so I'm in the tools menu, customer portal, customer portal settings. Okay, so let me just kind of go over. This is the last major thing I'll go over before I hand it over to James here. And so, and I'm only going to go over a few of these things. I know you folks can read and you've probably played around with these things. I'll go over the what most people have questions about. Um, and of course, if you have questions throughout this portion of the webinar, again, feel free to ask James. He'll be answering your questions along the way. And so what I've done here is this is where I've renamed everything the Pure Chat Customer Portal. And earlier I mentioned that you have the ability to let customers self-register. And so here's the permission, here's the setting where you would check it. And it's the same, the setting underneath it is where you would give folks, where you would decide whether or not you want people who do self-register to be approved first. And then if, whether or not you want to be notified of when people are self-registering. And so this one works the same. You just check the permission and then you enter the actual emails of anyone. And they don't have to be Axelsoft users. You know, preferably they should be, but if they, I mean, if they are being notified of people who need to be approved, then they should be an Axelsoft user who can approve them. But regardless, you're able to approve. Uh, notify others if you'd like. Okay, so one question that we get a lot is this is with regards to this particular portion. So in the notification settings, like, well, what's going on here, Jonathan? I don't, I don't get it. And so what it says is give customers adding item the option to add themselves to the notification list. And so it's a little checkbox that when you're in the customer portal, I don't think I've given, I have not given the permission, so they don't, it would be a little checkbox that would appear on this field template that says notify, notify me or notify customer. And essentially what that would mean is that they would be notified of absolutely any change that was made to that ticket. Now, the reason why it's not highly recommended by we here at Axosoft is because, you know, that might be, it might be too much. And you may already have general notifications. So this is when you go to tools, 
notifications, manage notifications. You know, you can configure just a general notification that is sent to the customer contact or the created by email address, and they are only notified of workflow step changes, for example, or they're only notified of status changes, things that are relevant to them, things that oh, okay, thank you so much for sending me this notification. Like, make it make it a valuable notification that you're receiving. And so we usually don't recommend this one, but if you do want customers to be notified of any change made to the item, then this is where you can go ahead and enable that. So the grid settings. Another question that we get often is, Jonathan, great, I, I see all the places where I can add, you know, items, where I can add um, fields that my customers can access you know, just in the grid, like the way I see Axosoft when I log in and I'm in grid view, I want to be able to, you know, let them see all the grids, the, the grid columns that I that I want them to. Um, but when I enable it and I save it, you know, I don't I, I don't see it in the customer portal when I'm logging in as a as a sample as a sample user. And you're right, so it's still ID, title, and status, even though I have enabled several other columns. And so what you have to communicate to your customer, and you may not have to, depending on the shortcut that I'm going to show you in a few moments, um, but they would go to the gear in the upper right corner, just like you do when you're in Axosoft and you're working in the grid view, and you would just let them enable the columns they want to see. Now, certain things, uh, this is actually great, I'm glad this happened. So workflow step is viewable. Customers do have the ability to view the workflow step of any item, but they cannot edit well let me see they can edit the item itself but even if i gave them the ability to view the workflow step in the field template and they could edit the ticket they customers will never be able to edit the workflow step and that is done by design only full axosoft users fully licensed axosoft users can act can change the workflow step and so that is by design um Really, if you need someone to be working an item, they should be an Axosoft user. So if you ever have that question, if you ever run into that, just understand that that is by design. Okay. And and also bear in mind that I've, I'm currently grouping by workflow step right now. So um, if you wanted to, I'm going to create one more item. Uh, just, just to test and test and save and close. Um, and I can group by, you know, priority. So... It looks like these don't have priority, so let me do workflow step. It's probably much better. Okay, so there you go. You can introduce group. You can, you know, teach your customer. This is how you can group. This is how you can enable different columns. Or let me go back over here on this side. I know I'm jumping around a bit, so, but this is I think this is kind of cool stuff that you can do with the portal. And so I've talked about what you can enable in the grid, and so I've shown you how you can show your customers how they can enable what they see in the grid view. I'm going to jump ahead because I want to show you that you can also control what the customer will see when they log in. OK, so towards the beginning of the webinar, I talked about the advantages of creating a dummy user, a dummy custo a portal, customer user that can log into the portal. And so in my case, it's Bob Sanders. And the reason I like having Bob Sanders around is because I can't, this is what I did. So I can take Bob's, I can log in, see what Bob sees. I can add columns, add grouping, and I can, I want this view to be the view that my customers see when they log in. And so in order to do that, I would need to go back to this setting. So I'm in security and customer defaults, and I could set Bob Sanders as a default for both of these. And so essentially what both of these translate to is when, I, when my customer logs into the portal, they will see exactly what I've designed them to see. And even if they navigate away, when they log back in, they will see exactly what I want them to see. And so it's incredibly useful for you because you can design their experience even further now. You can control what columns they see, any grouping you want to introduce. I mean, your portal may have you know a litany of of items here that is viewable. I only have two in this example, but you might have multiple and grouping them might make more sense. And so, and then you can also, you know, include filters in your portal security rules to, you know, cut down on the portal items as well. So there's tons of things that you can do. If that part doesn't make sense, let me know. But essentially, if I were to log in as Bill, I can, I will see the same thing that I see as Bob. 
for the most part, like the same the same structure. So if I create an item, it'll be grouped the same way, the columns will be the same, so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm gonna go back. Uh, there's basically two more things that I'll talk about before I hand it over to James, and that's the appearance setting. So you see that this is where I've added my Pure Chat logo, and I edited this in, in, the, in Photoshop myself. Um, something to be aware of. Um, if you have a long image, the portal will support it. And so, you know, take advantage of this real estate if you want to have a long, a longer um, image up in the upper right. I also have my footer down here. I don't know if you can see it or read it, but it says 2015 Pure Chat Inc. That is also right here, 25. And then if you have registration that you must include just by the nature of your organization, we also give you the ability to add that as well. Um, that's when they are logging in. Um, and then, of course, configuring... What does, what does the customer see when they type in an incorrect password? Okay, they've clicked the forgot password link. What should I say to them? And so you can be as formal or as colloquial as you wish. Okay, and then this just talks about, you know, the approval process. Um, and then the other stuff down below here, um, I won't get to in this webinar, essentially because they usually involve professional services on our part. And so when it comes, or it's not available for hosted customers. So if you have any questions about external authentication, which is more related to installed customers, um, or if you have questions about embedding the portal, that's something that we're more than happy to discuss with you over email, just because that kind of gets, uh, there's a lot of details to cover there. So, and the last thing I want to talk about here is a portal, before I hand it over to James, um, you know, you can have as many portal users as you want if you are a hosted customer. That's one of the advantages of using the portal. So even though customers can't work an item, you know, maybe you don't necessarily want that, but you do want them to at least give you some input and communicate, you know, problems that they are having. And so that's, you can, as long as someone has access to the URL, they can self-register themselves perhaps and then help, you know, interact with you in this way. The other component of Axosoft Help Desk is the email to ticket automation, which is what another, most, a lot of customers like to do is I have customers email their tickets as well. But if you want to de design the experience a little more closely, this is where the customer portal might come in handy. Okay, so I've talked for about half an hour and I'm gonna switch over here. So give me a moment. I'm gonna switch over to James. Give me one sec here, I'm just gonna switch. Okay. All right, so you should be seeing the agenda once more. As you can see, the next part is the portal preview. And I'll be switching over to, all right, this component here. James, if you are ready, you can take it away. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, great preview there. So I've been answering questions as we go along. Uh, keep those coming. You guys are uh, asking great questions on Customer Portal, what's uh, been presented so far, and also configuration. Uh, so we'll be happy to answer those at the end as well. Um, so now that Jonathan's gave an example, I want to go over some settings that are changing. So this is a benefit for you attendees who are uh, previewing this early. Um, but this will be in an upcoming release. Uh, nothing crazy new as far as feature and functionality goes, but we are reorganizing and relabeling things that apply to customer portal configuration. The first one is, as you see, publicly viewable is no more. So as Jonathan uh, said how you can make items publicly viewable, you set them uh, on the item when you're editing in the application as user, and then you provide public item view permissions in the portal security role. This is now going to be relabeled as show on portal. So it's going to be the same checkbox, uh, but just relabeled so it's clear as when you enable this checkbox, it's you're enabling it for customer contacts who have this permission. They can see it on the portal. So as uh, this is defined, I'll have uh, Jonathan go to the new portal security role page. Again, uh, this isn't scary. There's no new functionality. It's relabeling and reorganizing and this should make it a lot easier when you're setting up a security role and uh, applying it to a customer contact. So what's going on here is we relabeled things so, uh, in the current version, if you're following along, you'll see basically one big section which has view my permissions and view public permissions. As we see, what that really means is 
when an item is uh, set to a particular customer contact, that's view my permissions in terms or in perspective of the customer contact. But what it really means from an administrator point of view or user uh, access off, it's view their items, uh, the customer contact in, in that uh, sense. The second one again is public items, which will then be show on portal. So as we can see uh, in the next section, we have the customer portal permissions. That's going to be that show on portal checkbox. And then the third section is customer specific permissions. So whether or not it's assigned to or set to a particular company and a specific contact. So as we can see here, we're providing, uh, similar to what Jonathan had in his example portal, the ability to view bugs and tickets. In both cases, we have a filter that are not closed, so they'll only see items that have not been closed uh, in a particular status or workflow step, and they also can view and add attachments. And also, in the case of bugs, we see the last checkbox. Uh, this particular contact will be able to see all bugs reported by their company. So other contacts that are assigned to the same customer and that are not closed, they'll be able to see those. Whereas tickets, they'll only be able to see their tickets. Um, so again, just a reorganization. It should provide uh, a little bit uh, more uh, clarity for that sense when creating a portal security role. If you're used to the current version, hopefully this helps and new users alike. So I'll pass it back to Jonathan here. And then James, this does remind me, I did want to touch on one more thing before we proceed to the next question, and that is the portal field templates. And so portal field templates behave just like any other of the field templates that you've dealt with, you know, and that's what you see when you edit any ticket if you're the administrator, then you can click this gear and you're taken to the field template where you can arrange what customers see. And so when you go to tools, fields, field templates, you'll, you can you know, browse between each of the different item types. And we give you a portal field template by default. You can very well just copy this and rename it and associate it uh, to a different project folder if you wish. But essentially, this is where I was able to associate an emotional state. This is a custom field that I created that has you know, its own drop-down menu. Um, and once you design this portal field template in the way that you want for this particular item type for this particular project, all you need to do is go to the project folder and hit edit. And, this is, and then you go to the customer portal. And this is where you associate the field template that you want customers to see when they open an item. So when they create a ticket, they're using this field template. So they're, you're asking for those pieces of information. So I'm asking for that emotional state. Um, I'm asking for attachments, a title, and a, a description. If I had a different field template that maybe didn't ask for emotional state and it, it doesn't let you attach, then I can select a different field template I've created here just to do that one very thing. And then you'll notice that I can change what type of information I ask for depending on the item type as well. And so earlier you saw how when I added a defect or a feature, it was different than what I was it was asking me for different pieces of information than what I was when I was creating um, an actual incident. So if I go here, I don't have permission to, I took away that permission, but you saw how it was different. And so that's where you can control that. So you can associate your own custom field template if you choose to, or you can let it inherit whatever the parent item is. So in this case, the default is a portal security rules. In this case, it's the same, but I can always change it as well. So I just wanted to make sure I cover that piece. I know that I, I think I glossed over that part and I wanted to ensure that that was covered. Right, that's, that's a good question. We had multiple questions here on uh, both setting requirements for the portal um, and also the ability, like a, an example, to how uh, internal as a user I see, you know, data on the item that is different than what the customer sees. Mm -hmm. And um, that relates to both setting default values. Uh, so you can, like in, in this case, th there was a description there that you could set. Uh, now with the most recent 15.1 update, you can set formatting in large text fields. So you can have nicely formatted 
uh, source on the portal template that when a customer goes to add, they'll be able to fill out uh, whatever data you need to begin uh, the item in your workflow. See my HTML. Oh, look, that's so fancy. Okay, cool. Yeah. So. <laughs> nice setting. So this might have come up in the help desk webinar as well in previous examples. Uh, we recently set up Wiki. So this is actually our anonymous portal security role loading by default, where the Wiki page is selected uh, as the primary tab. And this is actually a picture of our company here. Uh, just goofing off and having fun. <laughs> but this is a wiki page for the project, and it says challenge ex uh, accepted, and then it provides a description of basically how you should use the portal and how it can benefit you. So it's basically how to report a defect, and if you log in, you can actually also do incidents to get in contact with our team. So it's just a nice way of formatting and uh, documenting available resources for your customer contacts in the most general sense. All right. So thank you, everyone, so much for taking the time to join us. It's great having you sitting wherever you are or standing or looking at the sunlight or if it's raining where you are, wherever you're joining us from, thank you so much. Uh, here's how you can reach out to us. So first of all, we're really, we love Twitter. And so if you tweet us, we'll, we'll absolutely love you and would love to talk to you. If you have questions, this is what I want to hear. I mean, if you have questions or topics, other topics that you want to see in future webinars, you know, let us know, tweet us. Um, we take those pretty seriously. I mean, you are an actual customer requesting a real topic and we would love to actually make sure that all our customers' needs are being addressed. And by having that conversation, we'll get that information. Um, subscribe to our Axosoft YouTube channel not only just to see the recording of this webinar, which will be posted when it is made available in the next couple of days, but also just to see, you know, our repository of, you know, our backlog of other webinars. So as I mentioned earlier, check out our notifications webinar, check out our help desk webinar. We have a scrum webinar as well that, you know, myself and then a few other colleagues here on the customer success team have done. And then if you do have a question, or if you want to set up, you know, some time to chat, you can email into success at axosoft.com. More than happy to answer some of your questions about the portal. You know, the whole point of this is to help your customers be successful. And we want them to be able to communicate between, you know, you and them. So by all means, send us your questions. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy Tuesday. And from James and myself and everyone at the company, thank you again. Mm -hmm.